RJ, 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 RJ. He's going to dominate college basketball. The present and future of Canadian hoops, 18-year-old R.J. Barrett is poised to become the face of college basketball and potentially the number one pick in the 2019 NBA draft come June. His size, his length, takes the ball to the basket with authority. Oh, Barrett, sky high! Barrett's resume speaks for itself. Dominant at the FIBA level and on the high school circuit, Barrett is far and away the most accomplished player in this draft, with an excellent blend of floor and upside. He exudes the confidence teams look for in a top pick, and his aggression and skill level should result in a monster freshman season at Duke. Here comes Barrett. He's going to go by and go. Left-handed, he can he can handle the ball. He's an excellent passer. Puts a lot of time into his game. Candace Fine is probably a lot of coaches wondering how in the heck they're going to try to slow that young man down. R.J. Barrett has an outstanding physical profile for a big guard at 6'7", 210 pounds with powerful athleticism in the open floor. He's an explosive leaper when he has momentum and plays above the rim with ease in space. As you can see here, his ability to stop and start on a dime with force is impressive and unique for a player his size. Barrett also has extremely long strides that allow him to Euro step past opponents in transition where he's lethal. His physically mature frame and fearless mentality at 18 years old help him play through contact and physicality on a nightly basis. From a physical perspective, Barrett compares favorably to DeMar DeRozan, a shade under 6'7", close to 210 pounds, with an average 6'9 wingspan. Like it did DeRozan, his mature physical profile will help him produce from day one in the NBA. The potential number one pick is an aggressive, confident scorer who wants to do most of his damage at the rim. Barrett plays a herky-jerky game predicated on slight change of speed, power, and stride length. As you can see here against one of the draft's best defenders, Nasir Little, Barrett rocks him to sleep before taking two huge steps to get to the front of the rim. His first step is good, but his second and third are even better. Again, he uses those big strides and Euro steps to put bigs on skates in pick and roll drop coverages. Then against NBA caliber defender Scotty Barnes, he utilizes his strength to work his way into the paint, then boom, sidestep again at the rim. Those big steps should really help him around the rim both at Duke and once he gets to the NBA. For these driving lanes to exist, Barrett needs to knock down shots, which is an area he's made great strides over the last few years. He's more than capable with his feet set, especially when given time and space, improving his shot preparation, and doing a better job of catching on the hop. Barrett has also improved as a pull-up shooter. Now he's not all that dynamic in terms of creating space with step backs or stopping on a dime in mid-range spots, but if teams go under ball screens repeatedly and dare him to shoot, he can knock down threes, and that's gonna go a long way in setting up the rest of his game. If all else fails from the perimeter, Barrett can take smaller defenders down to the block, the mid post, hit you with the right shoulder turnaround, also an inside pivot face up jumper, super talented one on one score in these mid post spots, and just really aggressive. He likes physicality, he should live at the free throw line during his time at Duke. And while he's best creating offense with the ball in his hands, he can also add some value off the ball. Here is a backdoor cutter, does a nice job of losing Scotty Barnes, and then uses his explosiveness and intensity to attack the offensive glass. Because of his competitive nature, he does some of the little things that you don't always see from star players. Barrett is at his best functioning as a jumbo lead guard as he's far more valuable on the ball than off it and has the passing instincts to warrant playing that spot. Although wired to score, he has vision in the open court, locating shooters and cutters alike. He's most comfortable with the ball in transition and he'd be best in a situation where he has freedom and is surrounded by shooting. Barrett is an excellent lob passer as well and should have a field day with Zion Williamson as his primary target. Although left-hand dominant as a driver and finisher, Barrett is actually an adept off-hand passer, whether it's drop-offs or kick-outs along the baseline. While not the most creative ball screen facilitator, his size allows him to see over the top of the defense to hit the roller in stride. 
He's also learning how to use both sides of the floor to find open shooters. Because of the attention he draws as a scorer, Barrett should be able to cash in on his passing instincts to spoon feed open teammates all season long in Durham. Like most 18 year olds, Barrett isn't immune to defensive lapses, but he does have a competitive streak about him that shows up for stretches on the defensive end. Given his size and stride length, when Barrett is fully engaged, he does a great job of sliding to contain penetration and using his 6'9 wingspan to reject attempts in the paint. Barrett has the type of physical makeup that NBA teams are looking for in a versatile, multi-positional defender. Barrett is also able to add value off the ball as well. He climbs the ladder to reject 7'3 bull bull on this play, giving a glimpse of his competitiveness. Then here, impressive verticality technique that you don't often see from guards, but his size, athleticism, and solid reach really helps him in these areas. He has quick hands and instincts in the passing lanes, often turning defense into offense. The 6'7 lefty is a factor on the glass as well. He's not afraid to mix it up in the paint and tends to gravitate toward the ball in the biggest of moments. Easily Barrett's most glaring weakness is his consistency as a shooter. According to our database, he's a career 31% three-point shooter and 64% from the free throw line. As of late, he's really improved his shot preparation and ability to catch on the hop, but he will revert back to old habits at times. A ball dominant prospect at this stage of his development, teams will want to see Barrett improve his catch and shoot game so he can coexist with a wider variety of players long term, particularly other ball handlers. He's not the most dynamic on the move shooter either and tends to turn down open spot ups for contested pull ups or drives into traffic. Becoming more comfortable off the ball will be key to Barrett's development, and that starts with his spot shooting. Barrett has passing instincts, but he's still evolving as a decision maker. He'll fire up contested pull-up twos early in the shot clock, or put his head down and drive right into traffic, trying to rely on the strength that played a big role in his success at the youth levels. A historically accomplished FIBA player used to having a lot of freedom with the ball, Barrett tends to get a bit isolation happy, using too many dribbles to get to his spots. The 18 year old has his careless moments as a passer as well, he'll kill his dribble versus pressure on occasion, and telegraphs basic reads. He's lackadaisical at times, trying to fit no look passes into windows that don't exist. Before an NBA team is willing to put the ball in Barrett's hands full time, They'll want to see him make progress as a decision maker, limiting his turnovers and becoming more efficient with his dribbles. While an extremely gifted, accomplished, aggressive scorer, Barrett's inconsistent pull-up game does hurt his shot creation efficiency somewhat in the half court. While deep pull-up threes aren't easy for any 18-year-old, he'll have to find ways to combat the under pick and roll coverages he's destined to face, especially with teams likely to pack the paint playing next to Zion Williamson. When guards go over and bigs drop, Barrett is still evolving as a mid-range shooter. He has good footwork, but he doesn't look all that comfortable rising up going to his right, which leads him to try and lean on that physicality, attempting to overpower opponents on his way to low percentage shots or turnovers in traffic. You see it more often than not when he attacks going to his right. Now he's improved, but he's still very much left-hand dominant in the half court. At 6'7", 210 pounds with an assertive approach, Bully Ball has worked for Barrett at every level, but he'll likely need more ways to create space and a reliable pull-up to prove his worth as a number one scoring option in the NBA. While a unique athlete with impressive stop-start time and stride length, Barrett is really left-handed around the rim and can stand to add more finesse to his game when he faces length. He does have a lefty floater and a euro step, but he'd benefit from adding more skilled finishes. Given the sheer volume he generally relies on, becoming a more adept pull-up shooter and skillful finisher will help Barrett continue his scoring ways as the level of competition increases. Overall, Barrett is certainly a competitor. 
but his focus does waver on the defensive end, like most 18-year-olds. He gets too upright in his stance at times, giving his opponent a runway to the rim and trying to recover with blocks rather than staying sound with his technique and keeping the ball contained. His discipline can also improve, as he tends to reach or bite on shot fakes. Off the ball, Barrett is still improving as well. Here Cam Reddish loses him with a sharp back cut on the first play of the Nike Hoop Summit game. He regularly lost sight of his man during Duke's summer tour as well, leading to back cuts or open corner threes. Barrett has the tools and competitive nature to be a very good on and off ball defender, but his consistency and focus on that end fluctuates, in part due to the offensive load he's always had to carry for his team. Positional size, scoring instincts, playmaking ability, defensive potential, a big time resume, and a killer mentality. Question marks aside, Barrett has proven to be an alpha dog at every level, and college basketball should be no different. As it stands now, Barrett is the favorite to hear his name called first come June. I saw him play at the City of Palms Classic when he was a junior down in Florida and I thought he could have played in the league right there. Oh, I wanted to go out on. there and grab come him and put on. him on a team.